Thanks for tuning in to Inside IU Volleyball with Sherry Dunbar. We're back from San Diego. Tough adjusting to this time. I, I know I laid in bed for a while waiting to fall asleep. I don't yeah. know about you, Coach. How's the time adjustment going? Yeah, I guess it helped me last night just because I could prepare a little bit for today. But this morning when the alarm went off was a little bit tough. And I know our kids had weightlifting at 645. But um, it was a great trip. You know, San Diego is a beautiful city. And we're fortunate here that we're able to do trips like that and, and go back to where our kids are from, Whitney Granado, who I know you talked to later on, is from that area, Southern California. So I know it was nice to have her family and, and friends be able to be in attendance. And in and out burger. Oh, absolutely. I don't know. I know Coach, shirts K, and, uh, Coach K probably loved it more than anybody with two yeah, double doubles. He was trying to figure out how to get back there several times during the, the trip, but I think the kids really enjoyed it. It's something different. And we always try to go, and, and I know our fans probably don't know this, but this is something about me. When we go on road trips, we like to go to local-type places to eat. in and out Burger is not so much a local place, but it's some place that the kids don't normally get to eat, and um, it was kind of a treat for them. So we, get, we had some good food out there. And Friday night, we took the team took down George Washington in five sets. Saturday morning, they fell in five sets, but um, falling back 2-0, they battled back to force a fifth set. You got to be happy with their their way to battle back in the morning match against UC Santa Barbara. Yeah, Santa Barbara's going to have a good season. They ended up um, doing very well in the tournament and and beating George Washington the next day. And their only loss was to San Diego. Um, yeah, there was some good and bad all weekend. To be honest, I think it was pretty much a roller coaster. Um, and there's a lot we have to get better at right now. And we're going to keep um, working in practice and mentally and physically to step up to this next level and I thought that's what this tournament was all about is to understand you know the level of play a George Washington that's undefeated and a San Diego team that's ranked in the top 20 and a Santa Barbara team that is going to have a very good year and is very talented uh, traditionally um, so I think it was eye-opening in some aspects of it and we have to learn from that and and in a short turnaround, you know, open up with Michigan, Michigan State this weekend. And again, one of the bright spots this weekend, Caitlin Cox, eight aces across the weekend, and two to, two matches of 20-plus digs. Yeah, we've talked about her a lot on the show, and, and deservedly so. I think she's had a great year so far, and I'm very proud of uh, not just how she's playing, but how competitive she is and, and how she's transferring that over to good play uh, at every level. You know, not just this past weekend, but throughout the season so far in preseason. So um, that's a big bright spot right now is to use that to our advantage and uh, use her aggressiveness and hopefully have that transfer over to the rest of the team as we kind of go through this. I think she takes these matches now, starting Big Ten and even this last weekend, as enjoyable challenges, as challenges herself and wants to challenge the team to step up um, to that level. And it's nice to have a libero in that position. I think that's a, that's a huge position to have is that passionate player that wants to win. Um, the setter and the libero, I always say, you know, if you can have those two spots that have that drive in them and that leadership, I think, you know, in the front row and the back row, that makes a big difference. And the best team in the tournament that took it all was the host, University of San Diego, ranked 17th in the nation. How does playing a team like that on the road prepare you for Big Ten season? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure we played well against them, so it's it's hard to say it really prepared us except for it kind of opened our eyes up to, okay, you know, this is not mid-major anymore playing like the last two weekends and nothing against the teams we played the last two weekends. They fought extremely hard and everything, but the level of the Big Ten, as everyone knows, is the best in the country. And playing San Diego is very similar to that um, because of their physicality, because of their style of play, um, very clean volleyball in system a lot, able to run a lot of double quick type things, a lot of offense against us, but also on the other end, you know, serving aggressive, playing good defense against us, and, um, you know, and I told the team, I was very disappointed in how we played against San Diego. For short stretches, we competed, but not overall, um, and that's a lesson. I mean, we have to compete every single point in the Big Ten to be able to um, play at a level that's going to get us to the next level, an NCAA tournament, or just playing to the ability of this team, you know, so uh, we got our work cut out for us, and I think we all know that, and we'll be up for the challenge to, to make changes and, and make it better. And while we were in San Diego, I caught up with our own California girl, Whitney Granado, poolside at our hotel. We are here in sunny San Diego, California. 
about an hour south of Riverside, California, home of Whitney Granado. Whitney, thank you for joining me. Whitney, there are a lot of stereotypes associated with California. <laughs> you being a California girl yourself, which one of those stereotypes annoys you the most? Um, probably the one that says, you know, everyone's a L.A. kind of spoiled brat, and I think that's probably the one. That's not you at all? No. no. Okay, which one of those stereotypes fits you the most? Is it like Jade Henderson says you're a surfer bra? Uh, I'm definitely a beach bra. Um, really? Probably. Yeah, it fits me the most. Can you surf? I have before, but I mean, I don't do it every day. <laughs> so did you spend a lot of time playing beach volleyball? I did. Growing up, you know, won a few tournaments and had some beach partners and stuff, and so that was, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. And it led you to Indiana. What made you want to come to the Midwest and leave the Golden State? Um, you know, I, I really did want to go out of state and kind of do something. What do you miss most about California being in Indiana all year? Um, not having a winter like we do. I do not miss having snow or any of the not having snow. And the beach, probably. Definitely the beach. Okay, one final question. There are two songs out there called California Girls. There's the Beach Boys <laughs> and then Katy Perry. Which one of those songs fits you the most as the um, California Girl on this IU roster? Probably... Katy Perry song. Why is that? I think it's a little more modern, a little more upbeat. Um, so you like to rock the Daisy Dukes with the Katy on top? Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, Thanks, Whitney. Cody. Coach, most times when you're recruiting, you, you really hit the Midwest hard, but Whitney's an exception. You went all the way to Riverside, California to pick her up. Yeah, you know, we knew some people in the club that she played for, and Sarah Gustin, my old assistant, um, knew the director uh, of 951 where she played and so we were out there playing Long Beach a couple of years ago um, and went and watched her train and really liked what we saw and ends up she came on an official visit and absolutely loved it and that's a that's a great story because you know you talk to recruits so often and you do a lot of kids want to stay within driving distance of home and everything but um, the opportunity to do something totally different for four years and you can always go back home. I think she really took that to heart and absolutely loves Bloomington, loves Indiana, um, you know, and is experiencing something that she would have never experienced staying on the West Coast. The, the change of seasons and, you know, the big time uh, sports with football and everything. Not that they don't have that out there, but it's a different kind of style here. And I think she's really enjoying this experience and it's nice to see somebody um, take that leap of faith, you know, and go clear across country knowing your parents will only see you maybe once or twice a year. Um, and she's adjusted very well to that. And the team is back at UGIM this weekend with Michigan and Michigan State. Michigan, 12-0 and on the season, ranked 18th in the nation. Mm -hmm. the Michigan State, they're 11-1. and You beat both of these teams, though, last season at UGIM. How do you keep that going this season? Well, I think part of that is home court advantage. You know, we're 6-0 and at home right now. We were 13-2 and at home last year. I think we have to use that to our advantage, the comfort level of playing in your own facility. Um, so I'm hoping that helps to a certain degree, but bottom line is we're going to have to really scout them. We're going to have to get a lot better this week in practice and find new ways to, to play at a certain level and, and uh, really get after it, the competitive nature in practice every day this week. Um, so we can be up for the challenge on Friday night because they will be a challenge for us, Michigan and Michigan State, both very athletic teams, very well coached, um, and are having great seasons so far. And while it is a higher caliber of play in the Big Ten, do you find it as a coach maybe easier to prepare for because you know what to expect having seen these teams four years yeah, in a row? Yeah, you know, I mean, preseason is tough. You know, not that, you know, we scout all the teams and you get to see them live a little bit when we go to these preseason tournaments where you're playing three in a weekend and you don't know these teams very well at all. So it's the first look at some of these players and you open up with Michigan, Michigan State and you pretty much know their entire roster before they get here, what they're good at, what they're not as good at, even the recruits coming in, because we all have kind of a recruiting database of the same type of players in the Midwest and that's where most of us recruit from, we've seen those kids over the last three, four years. So easier, I don't know if it's easier, but it's much more comfort level of knowing 
you know, these teams much better and what you're going to get out of them. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. You know, we just got film already on both teams and to start really analyzing that film and figuring out how we can find a way to win this weekend. And both of those matches, Friday and Saturday, can be found on BTN.com. Eric Roberts and I will have the call on that. Now it's time for Tweet of the Week. Uh, we have a repeat tweeter here. Okay. Five Gamma Slamma, Matt Kachowski. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Matt. He asks, who gets posters this weekend, Coach? I guess he's going to come I to love his gym. posters. I think I know who he is because I think he had a poster about me one weekend, which was fantastic. Um... And I love it because he's really into it and he's tweeting and doing all these social media things. Um, but just his support of the games is fantastic. So who should she, he do posters about? He could do one about you. I think that would be fantastic. I mean, you know, everybody would get to know you. You'd be a celebrity then. Um, but if you wanted to do a player, you know, I think, it, I don't know, he can choose. But, you know, Caitlin Cox is that fire engine and maybe doing a poster about her and getting her fired up for her... First, maybe, last Big Ten weekend. Maybe know? Caitlin Cox brings her shovel every night, something like that. Yeah, something like that. You know, she, that would be kind of fun. But I think you. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm really gonna, I'm gonna vote for that. Celebrity and you, Jim. <laughs> uh, it's my coming out. He's party. a wannabe, you know. You know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope to see you all at U Gym this weekend. Tune in next week for another edition of Inside IU Volleyball. For Sherry Dunbar, I'm Cody Sherritt. Thank you for watching.